2019 has been such a weird year in gaming. It started out with the news of Bungie splitting from Activision but keeping the rights to Destiny. We finally got a discless console with the all-digital Xbox One S. Finally had a Battle Royale game to rival Fortnite which then dropped off a cliff a bit and of course we had a new player in the first party scene with Stadia being released. Nintendo also released a new version of the Switch with the light and even revamped the main Switch with a better battery so an awful lot happened this year. With all of this it's easy to forget the actual games that came out as we didn't necessarily get a God of War style game but instead got many pretty decent games to make this a consistently good year. This is of course my game of the year video but I'm not going to do just that. In fact I'm going to do what much larger outlets do and split it up into different categories because well why not? Now first up is the surprise of the year. This goes to the game that took me completely by surprise. I could have very easily given this to Google for announcing and releasing Stadia because I'm not going to lie, I really didn't see that coming at all. And although it stutters a little bit, I do still see this as the future of gaming. But this award needs to go to a game, not a platform. So I'm going to give this to Apex Legends. They pretty much announced and released it on the same day for free. 25 million people downloaded and played the game, which made Apex challenge Fortnite, which is just, just such a huge achievement. Even now, the game is still getting free updates and has a dedicated player base and we even had a new map, so clearly Respawn has plans for this game going forward into next year. The award for the best action game could have gone to a few games this year, but I'm going to give this to Gears 5. This is the game that kind of put the franchise back on track in my opinion. The series hadn't been doing great since the third game in the franchise, but Gears 5 was really, really fun. The story wasn't anywhere near as good as the first three games, but it was okay. The multiplayer part of the game though was unbelievably fun. All the combat flowed beautifully and it even managed to add a little bit onto what has made the series great down the years and this game really showed the franchise is still alive and might even have a place on the next generation of consoles coming next year. This one was actually quite easy for me. Even with Control and Borderlands 3 coming out this year, they can't compete with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order in my opinion at all. This game is huge, it's beautiful and it's incredibly difficult. The game has a great story and is also so much fun to play, I just couldn't put it down. It feels like a mix between Bloodborne, Uncharted and a Metroidvania just to name a few and has left a lasting impression and I really hope this turns into a brand new franchise. Once again, this one goes to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Just 10 minutes into the game, I already gawked at how stunning this game is and it just keeps on giving that throughout the entire 20 hour game. Sure, the faces in this game don't quite look that great, but everything else is simply epic and it looks almost perfect.
Well, I really wish I could play some of this music, but I really don't want a copyright strike or the chance to come up against some of the lawyers of Disney. Of course, this award goes once again to Star Wars. The whole score that we know and love is here, alongside some new epic music. Add this to the perfect sound of your lightsaber and the many blasters that you'll come up against, and you have a recipe for something truly special. Most people call this the Family Game Award, but let's be honest, Nintendo makes just about every good family game, so I'm gonna go with that. I could have very easily given this to Mario Maker 2 or Luigi's Mansion 3, and they would absolutely deserved it. They're amazing, but I simply can't. The first game I ever played was Pokemon Blue. I went on to complete it, and I played every generation since. Ever since I finished that first game, I wanted a full Pokemon game on a proper console, and this was the year I actually got that. I played Shield, but Sword is just as good, and these games are amazing. They're beautiful, full of Pokemon everywhere, have a decent story, and they're just about long enough to be my favorite ever Pokemon game. The only issue, perhaps, is they're not difficult enough, but that doesn't stop Pokemon from getting this award. So there is a slight problem with this award. I just don't play that many fighting games at all, apart from Smash Bros, and that came out last year, no matter what the game award said. I did, however, play Jump Force because I like anime such as One Piece, Naruto, and Dragon Ball. So this award kind of goes to that by default. Last year we got the incredible Celeste, so I didn't have too much hope that we'd get something of that class in 2019. Well, I couldn't have been any more wrong because the Outer Wilds blew my mind. No game gets space like the Outer Wilds. Every planet is crazy, they make no sense, but they're beautiful. The game makes you feel things. It makes you smile, cry, and everything in between. I really can't recommend this game enough, and that's why it gets my award. It just can't go anywhere else. And I can't really explain the game. You just have to go play it yourself. So I really wanted to give this award to Tetris 99 because it's so good and it gave a classic game a new lease on life. But unfortunately, I played and loved Apex Legends so much this year that I just can't give the award anywhere else. Each character has amazing and unique abilities and the shooting and traversal felt awesome. Even something as simple as sliding down a zip line feels just so good. The game also made people work together as unless you worked as part of your team of three, you have very little way of winning in this incredible battle royale. When debating what to give this award to, three games came to mind. Star Wars, The Outer Worlds, and Days Gone. Each game has a great story, and in fact, Days Gone has grown on me more through the year, but I'm still gonna give this one to The Outer Worlds. There was something about this story that hit me, so many gray area decisions that you had to make throughout the game that added to a narrative about good versus evil. The whole story of saving the colony of Halcyon comes together nicely and no matter which path you go down, the writing is just amazing. This was by far my easiest award to give this year because Parvati is simply my favourite companion of any game ever. 
Ashley Birch played this part just perfectly. She was awkward in any situation where she was complimented and she was so kind-hearted all of the time. Oh, and the side quest to get her ready for her date was both adorable and great fun. Honestly, it's one of the best parts I've ever seen played. Also pretty easy this one, The Outer Worlds was basically Fallout in space. I love Fallout and this is the same developer that made New Vegas and it shows. The humour is great, in fact I laughed hard out loud an awful lot of times during this game. The stealth works great, the combat is really fun and of course the writing is just top notch. I can't wait for a second game in this franchise and of course we should start getting DLC very, very soon. So I'm a big FIFA player and normally I'd give this award by pretty much default, but this year I just can't do it. So instead I'm going to give this the Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. Now I didn't actually buy this game myself, but one of my mates did and I've played it a lot around their house. It's the original PS1 game, but better in every single way and it's just so much fun. I'd love for more of these to be made and I think that there's room to expand so I can't wait to see what happens to Crash in the near future. So I didn't get the chance this year to play Fire Emblem Three Houses or Anno 1800, so this award could have been very different, but I did, however, play Total War Three Kingdoms. I've loved the Total War games ever since I played Rome back in the day, and this is the best Total War game in years. The game just works so well, and the map is beautifully detailed, so it's hard to get bored and all too easy to suddenly realize it's three in the morning when you have work at seven. So this game gets my award by default, but it really, really does deserve it. This could have very easily gone to Resident Evil 2 Remake, but it just didn't scare me that much at all, probably because I played and loved the original. Metro Exodus, on the other hand, is frightening. There's jump scares, eerie music, and such a scary atmosphere, but on top of that, it's just a damn good game. Shooting is still a little bit clunky, but this game just works. It has a great story and really good or bad Russian accents, depending what way you look at it. Oh, and did I forget to mention, there's a massive death train that's just, well, epic. I think this is an award that just needs to be around nowadays because remasters and remakes are everywhere. This year we had Crash Team Racing, which was awesome, but this award has to go to Resident Evil 2 Remake. This game is a masterpiece. It's stunning, almost bug free, and it pours new life into this old classic. Resident Evil 2 has long been one of my favorite Resident Evil games, and this just cements it because it's just so, so good. This one was hard. Two trailers stood out this year, Cyberpunk 2077 with the Keanu Reeves reveal and The Last of Us Part 2 with the Big Joel reveal and I was going to choose one of those but then the Game Awards happened. Basically Ninja Fury came out after the Xbox Series X reveal and showed off their new game for the new console and it was Senwa Saga Hellblade 2 and oh wow, what a trailer. No trailer has ever given me shivers quite like this one. It looked amazing, scary, creepy, and that chanting is just incredible. Seriously, go watch it. 
In fact, this trailer was so good, it suddenly made me want to play the first game and I'm already looking forward to the next gen release title. So here it is, the big award, the Huntman Productions Gamer of the Year Award. A few games could have won it this year, but in the end it came down to two. The Outer Worlds and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. In the end, I had to give it to Star Wars. This game is truly a masterclass. The combat is amazing, the story is great, traversal is fun, and that music. Oh, that music. It's some of the best music, not only in a Star Wars game, but in any game or movie that I've ever played or watched. This game has put Respawn on the map and it's shown that EA can actually do Star Wars right, so it is in fact a very important game as well. This should be the start of hopefully a really good franchise and I just can't wait to see what they do next. If you haven't played it yet, avoid spoilers and go get the game. It really is worth it. I can't actually express it enough. So that's my game of the year 2019 and of course we're now heading into 2020 and a brand new decade so make sure you hit subscribe so that you don't miss my game of the decade video and of course have an amazing Christmas and I'll see you next year.